Hello everyone, my name is Elias Drexler. Um, I'm a developer at Twinformatics, as already mentioned, and today I'm going to talk about micro frontends using single page applications. So um, who heard about the term micro frontend? One, two, three. Who uses micro frontends? Okay. <laughs> Um, so, just a quick overview on what I'm going to uh, present today. Um, at first, I will talk about what micro frontends are, then, I will present a few advantages and why you should use micro frontends. I will explain um, a few different types of micro frontend architectures. We'll show an example using the single spa framework. And at the end, I want to uh, talk about a few things that should be considered if you want to work with micro frontends. So, well, one moment, sorry, my presentation does not work. <laughs> okay, sorry, now it's working. <laughs> um, so, micro frontend means that you break down your frontend architecture, uh, your frontend monolith into its features. You could use um, one micro frontend for one bounded context from a business point of view. And there are multiple different approaches and I'm going to explain two or three of them. Um, but there are, of course, more approaches. So currently I'm working on a project and we use some kind of a micro frontend um, architecture. And I started with this topic earlier last year when I started writing my bachelor thesis. And I wanted to know what different options there are for um, single page application architecture. So um, when I started writing my thesis, I found the ThoughtWorks, ThoughtWorks technology radar. Um, for those of you who don't know this, they assess technologies and rate them. And um, when I started, I found the microservices in the um, assess part of the graph. And this means that it's a pretty new thing and you should be uh, pretty careful if you want to use it for a project. Nowadays, um, since March 2017, it's already in the trial part and um, it's a pretty good way to build your applications and I will show you why. So, if you use micro frontends, you, are, you could be, you can be framework independent. Um, if you think about it, there are many JavaScript frameworks and they are not easily interchangeable. So if you build an application in React and want to migrate it to Angular, that's not very easy to do. So if you have a large project and you use only one framework, you are very inflexible in the choices you um, can make. And if you realize after a year that you want to build a feature in another language, for example, in another framework, for example, in React, because it is easier to build this uh, feature in React, you cannot do it. Um, the next point is that each micro frontend can hold its own state. Um, this means that each app only knows about its own state and it can decide what it publishes to the other applications. There is no tight coupling between the components, uh, between the micro frontends and they are easily interchangeable. So you're way more flexible if you use um, one monolithic application. You can do independent deployments for each micro frontend, meaning that each team can decide when they want to release, when they want to deploy, without any dependencies on the other teams. Um, there is no shared code base with other uh, features, for example, and there are less conflicts. And leading with all these points, leading to a faster time to market. And in the end, what you could utilize um, and you should utilize if you want to build uh, applications using micro frontends um, across functional teams, just a short explanation. Um, you, it means that the teams are, um, have full control over the features they are building. They can decide what frameworks they want to use for um, which is the best for their needs. Um, and you, could, you should use something like vertical slice teams. Here's just a small uh, picture how our um, company uh, split the teams. I'm currently in team Portal Combat and we, have, we all do front-end and back-end development. 
And at the top you see a fin, the fin global application layer, which leads me to the micro front end architecture approaches because all front -end, all micro front end architecture approaches have this fin global application layer at the top that consolidates the micro front ends. It provides a possibility for each the, for each child applica uh, applications to um, communicate with each other and it yeah and um, there are or as I already mentioned there are a few approaches single framework or multi framework approaches um, I will talk about uh, the iframe approach and the single spa framework you could of course use um, web components for example or angular elements to implement these micro frontends, um, but I won't cover these. So if you want a single framework approach, um, it could mean that the teams create libraries and integrate them into one main application. But if you think about it, there is, um, this would not grant you all the advantages that you could gain if you use multiple frameworks. Because um, if you use multiple frameworks, the most important thing is that you have one uh, common component library that all micro frontends use because there's um, nothing more frustrating for a user to have a page and each uh, part of the page looks different. So for a single framework approach, it's pretty easy. You could use something, if you use Angular, you could use Angular Material. Um, for multiple frameworks, there has to be a different approach. You could use a component library written as web components. Um, also, if you want to use multiple frameworks, then you have to uh, utilize the DOM as the API so that the micro frontends can communicate with each other. And the biggest point is that the teams can decide which framework they want to use and which grants them a lot of flexibility. So to the first approach, and I think it's the simplest approach, you could, you could just use iframes to integrate the applications into your main uh, parent application. At the project I'm working, uh, the project that I'm working at currently uses this approach and integrates one application into another. But we use it only for one application. If you think about um, a website and you want to use 10 different micro frontends, and I will uh, cover that in a minute when I uh, talk about the single spa framework, you could think about it if you want to load 10 um, applications in Internet Explorer in iframes, I don't know, I don't want to know how this would look like. For the single spa approach, um, it is a framework developed by the company Canopy Techs. And they developed this framework because they wanted to migrate their Angular JS applications into to Angular 2. Um, but they could not do it um, at once, so they created this framework. It has support for many single page application frameworks, React, Angular, Vue.js, uh, Vue, AngularJS, Preact, Ember, and the list is very long. And what Single Spa does is it functions as a top level router that mounts and unmounts the child applications. Also, you um, could load different applications for different URLs and it always lazy loads these applications so the initial loading time um, does not increase. If you are interested into, in server-side rendered micro frontends uh, for large-scale websites, um, I won't cover these here, but you should take a look at the project Mosaic from Zalando. It's a very interesting project and they have a very um, good approach. So now I will show a, a small example using the single spa framework, how to integrate um, four different applications into one page. Um, one application is written in React, one in Angular, one in Vue, and the uh, last one in Angular 1. Okay. So um, to my example, if you look at it, you have four different apps and one portal app. And I... The portal app is the main single spa application that is the parent application for all other applications. And this is the main part of the framework, I could say. Um, so you define 
what application should be loaded. Um, in this case, we want to load four applications. And um, here you can see the name of each application and where the main entry file for, this, for the framework should be loaded, the URL. Um, the URL for the store, um, the Redux store. In my case, I use the Redux store to, to let these um, single micro frontends communicate with each other. Um, and if we look at the load app, all it does is it um, integrates the store into the, into the main app so that the main app knows the instances of the stores from the child application so it can send um, actions. And the most interesting part is the line at the bottom. Here you could see um, where we use the framework to register one application with a given name. Here we import the, the main application entry file This parameter should be a function that defines when this micro frontend should display. In my case, um, I wanted to display all these different micro apps on the same page. So um, I just simply default it to true, so they all display every, um, all regarding, regardless of the URL. But you could also do it um, that some applications display only for a specific part of the website. And then at the end you can pass custom properties to the application. Um, for in this case it is used to uh, pass in the global event distributor um, that is utilized to send the actions to the other components. If we now look at the main entry file for, of, for example, the Angular application, where is it? Yeah, here. Um, there are different helper libraries for most of the frameworks, um, but each library only does one thing. It provides lifecycle hooks for the Angular, uh, for the single spa framework to interact with your application. You have to provide three lifecycle hooks. The first one is the um, bootstrap. This lifecycle function is called only once, the first time before the framework bootstraps your application. The next one is the mount lifecycle that is called every time the application is mounted in the DOM from the single spa framework. And, at the, and the last one is unmount that is called at the end when, your, when the, for example, you want to show your application on a specific URL and the user changes the site, then it, the application will be unmounted. Okay, so and the example. If we look at this page, we can see um, four different applications. And this whole page consists of the single spa framework at the, as the parent application. And at the top, you see a Vue.js application. Um, the left one is written in React. The list of items is written in Angular. And um, the last component at the bottom is written in Angular 1. Um, these could also be written by different teams. They are lazy loaded and could be deployed independently. And just to show um, how these apps interact with each other, they, they use a global store. And um, so e all applications ha can access this global state, but they can also hold their own private application state that um, no other applications can see or um, change. And in this case, we can add a few items. In this case, it's a Redux store, yes. Um, there are a few possibilities how you could um, ut uh, utilize messaging in this framework. Um, I decided to use an example from the website. It's, um, it can be found in GitHub and um, change it a little bit but in the end it's a Redux store and all applications can send their um, actions. 
And yeah, what, uh, what's also really cool, you can, utilize, you can still utilize all the routing in, for example, Angular or React. Um, also, the subroutes are also working. So, and after they, they had the problem, they wanted to migrate, but they couldn't because they have this one big monolithic front end. And a few, months a few months later, I saw a screenshot of their application, and they use 10 to 15 um, single page application on one page, and um, have this completely dynamic um, user experience. So back to the slides. So um, at the end, just a few things that should be considered if you want to work with micro frontends. If you have that many applications on one page, there is always um, overhead because uh, we already heard about uh, possibilities to um, get better rendering time. And of course, you should, you should utilize all them. I couldn't <laughs> explain them as good as the, the speaker before me. Um, but you should use them to battle the performance impacts that come with micro frontends. It makes sense for big projects with many developers to split in these vertical slice teams, but for small projects, other approaches could be easier because the overhead of maintaining and um, creating such a micro frontend architecture is maybe not worthwhile if the project is very small. And you should also have a build pipeline, you should have um, continuous integration infrastructure, because there are, for some approaches, very difficult, um, complex builds, and integration is not always that easy. And in the end, it's just to say that micro frontends are not the solution for every problem. To recap, splitting micro frontend means that you split your monolithic application into smaller, maintainable, flexible micro apps. And there are a few different approaches, and I it's, uh, I couldn't cover them all in this sm uh, small talk, but um, just to, uh, to say, you could use iframes, you could use the single spa framework, you could use web components to encapsulate your um, applications. But in the end, it does not matter which approach you want to use. The most important thing is that you know what goal you want to achieve when you, want, when you use micro frontends. Thank you. <laughs>